Hi, I'm CJ Liu. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ Show, where we make spirituality practical, actionable, and fun. And today we have Philip Goldberg, who is the author of American Veda. And this is a wonderful book that I just read, and um, it talks all about stuff that I didn't know about how um, the Eastern culture, particularly the Indian culture, has had so much influence on the Western culture. So welcome, Philip. He's going to educate us today so that we can deepen our spiritual practice. Welcome. Okay, good to be with you. So I want to know when, you know, what I found so interesting about your book is it just has a nice chronological background about how the Eastern um, culture has influenced us, particularly the Indian culture. Can you just do a high level top hits of, you know, decade to decade hits of what's ha happened? All right, let's, you want a chronology? Yes, please. Okay, the, the book and the, the actual story begins uh, in the days, early part of the 19th century, when the first really good or the better translations and commentaries about India's spiritual heritage, books on Hinduism, Buddhism, and uh, commentaries about uh, uh, sacred texts started to come into America. They were read by people like Emerson and Thoreau, had a huge impact on their philosophies and their uh, writings. And then if you move forward in time, as I kind of do in, in American Veda, there are people in New England who started the New Thought movement. Madame Blavatsky who started Theosophy, Mary Baker Eddy who started Christian Science, later other people who started the Unity Churches and the Religious Science Churches. They too are all impacted by India. A big event occurred in 1893 when uh, Swami Vivekananda, who was the, the first major figure from India to come here and have an impact, arrived and his, he spent only a few years here but uh, established the first teaching institutions for the uh, dissemination of Indian philosophy called the Vedanta societies. And then uh, later in 1920, there would be another important uh, moment when Paramahansa Yogananda arrived and became the first guru who uh, established America as his base. And he would uh, be the most prominent uh, Indian spiritual teacher from 1920 to his death in 1952. And, and, and along the way, started his... Uh, institutions and and that are still alive teaching st uh, his his teachings and published the autobiography of a yogi which is to this day a very important influence mm -hmm. and when I'm thinking of that and when I'm hearing the big the big stuff that happens during that time from 1900 to I think you just said 1920s is that right it well, that's when he died, but it, his influence you could take that into the 50s yeah so it it feels very academic and kind of intellectual and... No, not at all. No? Not at all. These were practical teachings. They were teaching forms of meditation and uh, other yogic practices. There was a lot of publishing. There was a lot of books being written and a lot of uh, important intellectual uh, ferment around the, uh, the adaptation of Indian philosophy into American thinking. But the teachers, all the yogis, all the gurus were very practical people. They taught methods from the yogic repertoire. So Yogananda had his Kriya Yoga, Vivekananda and his swamis had various practices from the Vedantic uh, uh, tradition. But then, then in the 50s and 60s, you start to see um, even more of that as the accessibility to these teachers came alive. And really the big turning point was the 60s and yeah. the counterculture. Yeah. With, you know, and, and, and Indian uh, philosophies, ideas and yogic practices, meditation, chanting, hatha yoga, all these things started to come alive in the late 60s. And the big moment there was when the Beatles took up Transcendental Meditation, and uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi became the sort of face of India in, in the public eye, and meditation began to go mainstream. When the, when the Beatles went to India, there was this, this sort of high point of East meets West, mm -hmm. and, um, and that was the beginning of the mainstreaming of practices like meditation, and after that, 
uh, many of the other gurus who had been here, gurus and swamis, Muktananda, Sachidananda, all the others started to get bigger and bigger followings. Mm -hmm. At that point in the 70s, you had two things going on. One was the uh, meditation had gone mainstream, mainly because of the scientific research on it, and became an accepted part of... Well, transcendental uh, meditation is the part. Yes, right? but and then other uh, forms as well, but mainly the, the research on TM uh, put uh, everything into the mainstream and became uh, an acceptable uh, feature of... Um, healthcare, psychology, and so forth. So it wasn't just spiritual types. It was also secular, mainstream, scientific types. And then you had, subsequent to that, um, Americans becoming representatives of these teachings. So you had people like Ram Dass, who, yes. uh, and all uh. the, who then started to be trained as yoga teachers. Right. And then you had uh, scientific people and scholars and uh, artists and all kinds of people uh, adapting these teachings to their own areas of expertise and then transmitting them to a wider and wider public. Yeah. Until, you know, then came the uh, 90s and the, the aughts when you had the big uh, yoga studio boom and onward and onward and onward. And, and, and so the chronology is for these teachings to become uh, not only more diverse, and more of the the uh, diverse aspects of uh, India's great uh, spiritual legacy becoming available to us, um, but also you see it seeping increasingly into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So now, if a guru comes to America and gets a big following, it doesn't even hit the newspaper. Right, and we know what the word guru means, right? <laughs> and it's part of life, and and um, it's affected. Um, the way uh, Americans in general understand what spirituality is and can be. So, folks, American data. It's <laughs> Philip Goldberg's book, and you can read in detail. And I thought what was so fascinating is all the stories of the origins of the people, the yogis and the swamis that have come over here, and just understanding that. And, and in the book, it goes into a lot more in-depth information about Okay, how did that information actually filter into American culture? There's yeah. way more details, and you just gave us, like, the greatest hits. But yeah, this was just the overview. I mean, it's an incredibly interesting cast of characters. It is. And, yes. and the thing that's really most interesting is it wasn't just the famous gurus. There were a lot of people no one ever heard about who had a big impact. And it's the, the impact they had on certain... Westerners, Americans and Europeans who were very prominent people and who were instrumental in getting these ideas out there. I mean, people like, you know, John Coltrane and J.D. Salinger and, and uh, uh, Joseph Campbell and, you know, people who are very well-known figures were deeply impacted by these teachings and made them known to others. Yeah. Folks want to hear more about how to make spirituality practical, fun, and actionable, then go and friend us on the Fired Up with CJ page, or you can find us on iTunes where we have a weekly Thursday program. Thank you so much for being here.